work that we've chosen to uh, look at from according to ACARA is number and algebra, that is the uh, strand, and the substrand is money and financial mathematics, and the year level that we have chosen is year five. Um, we have a five, year five class with mixed ability levels. Uh, our class size is 20 students. Our topic is to create simple financial plans as according to ACARA. Uh, the learning outcome is that students will be able to understand concepts of creating simple budget plans for class fundraising events. Students will be able to correctly identify money, money concepts and place value. And students will also be able to identify GST component in invoices and receipts. The prior knowledge to, that students will need to complete this unit of work, the students will be able to read at a grade level. The students are able to understand the basics of addition and subtraction, and students are introduced to money handling in previous years. Uh, we have a total of nine lessons, which are about 30 minutes each. Uh, the unit description clearly outlines that the beginning of this unit focuses on ensuring the students have basic foundation skills and are understanding of both of what con concepts of addition and subtraction with money handling and creating simple budget plans. Students will be able to correctly identify money concepts. They then process the develop developing their conceptual skills of the difference between needs and wants and why choices need to be made on how limited resources are used. Once these foundation skills are mastered, students are introduced to strategies of identifying GST in invoices. So the knowledge, understandings and skills. Students can dif differentiate between money and earn and money spent. Um, students recognise and understand the concepts of money, place value in three digit numbers and students can solve addition and subtraction when creating a budget plan. So we have three focus questions. How can you find GST in invoices and receipts? What is a simple budget plan? And what is an efficient way to calculate budgeting money? So we have um, a big list of resources. So we have a smart board, simulation game, writing the class notes up on the smart board, iPads, um, we, we've got other resources which are um, unit and ten hundred blocks, <laughs> one set of large number cards which range from zero to twenty, a whiteboard with a whiteboard marker, a simulation game, fake money and butcher paper for elaborate thinking. And attached to our unit plan are a, a, n a number of printable resources, including a grocery shopping, shopping printout, money concepts and place value sheet, quiz about percentages, budget plan and weekly goals, and Pinterest printout. Okay, so our unit plan is uh, split up into nine 40-minute lessons. Uh, we felt we need to have them as 40 minutes uh, because of the content and activities that are covered in each lesson. Uh, sometimes um, some of the lessons had a lot of detail and required a bit longer to go through the lesson into depth and create a clear understanding. Um, so I'll just go through the lessons one to nine. Um, so the first one, students will be introduced to the main ideas and concepts of financial planning. Um, so the wants, over needs, activity uh, and things like that. Um, we also touch on the previous year's um, number and algebra um, just to make sure that um, they had a clear understanding of that before we throw them into something new. Um, and if they didn't, we'd go into that further. Um, so in lesson two... Um, students will begin to recognise how to um, divide an allowance into a spending plan. Um, so that one's pretty simple. In lesson three, students will view and compare prices and volumes of products. Um, this can assist in financial planning as it finds the best value for money um, and can help the students stay within the budget that is planned. Um, so for lesson four, uh, it's an everyday life financial plan um, and it's halfway through the unit so students will be able to gain finan uh, 
gain confidence in building a financial plan. Um, and then for lesson five, uh, that's an online budget game which helps students uh, shop for the best price and then um, fill orders for supply and demand um, while remaining in the budget that the computer game has offered. Um, and that's good because it um, just offers a different way of doing it, like introducing electronics. Um, And then for lesson six, we've got um, taxes, um, in particular the goods and services tax. Um, and then lesson seven is an extension of lesson six goods and services where um, they have to find that on a receipt um, and discuss uh, what that all means. And yeah. And then um, lesson eight is a mixture of identifying GST and introduction of investigate and calculate discount um, which is unit six uh, work um, and then for the last lesson it will just be a recap of the course topic um, discussing all the points that we've had as an objective so the um, allowance GST financial planning um, all together at the classroom and then assess that Okay, so um, our class description is quite um, mixed. We have one student with hearing impairment, one student who is gifted and talented, and one student who has financial constraints. And the classroom is divided into a very range of abilities. Um, so we took care of, of learning diversity for those three students. Um, and we briefly just covered each of those three students um, about how to support them. So to support a hearing impaired child, it is preferred that the teacher that is instructing the lesson should be wearing a microphone. This makes the classroom more clearer and makes the volume a little bit more louder for that child to hear. Also placing the student at the front of the class may be good for hearing access. Another option is to be giving out handouts with bigger fonts so that the student can read rather than listen. Um, Supporting the child who is gifted and talented is to adjust the, the task so that they are required to process more complex and abstract information from a variety of sources. Using a fast, faster pace, this still means providing clear instruction and scaffolding, but, will, but with few repetitions. Challenge and support students to set learning goals and develop higher order thinking skills, including problem solving strategies critical and creative thinking and self-reflection. Um, and to support a child with financial constraints is to con conduct a money and budgeting topic. It can be challenging but extremely beneficial for the student. One major aspect is to take into consideration the child's home life and be understanding and caring about their financial health. So this is lesson eight on percentages. Um, to begin the class, there will be a recap of what happened last week um, with about GST and the teacher will sit the kids on the classroom floor um, to get them interacting and engaged in the lesson. Um, after the discussion about what happened last week, um, they will play five minutes of the game on the smart board um, to get the students interested for the lesson ahead. Um, the game can be shared between three students who are doing the right thing and have been quiet and paying attention. Um, but the main activity in this lesson will be learning about percentages. The teacher will ask the students first what they think percentages are just to get an understanding of where they're at and what they think percentages are all about. After the teacher will write their notes on the board and what the students think and then uh, after that the teacher will go into more detail about what percentages are and what they do and um, how to discount them off receipts and all that. Um, after this discussion, discussion, get students into pairs at their tables and hand out the worksheets on going shopping in a sale, um, which is appendices four. Um, but first show the students the worksheet on percentages, um, work out a few together just to get them used to the activity um, and to confirm their understanding of the whole activity as a whole and then get them to go back to their tables in a pair um, and do the worksheet together. Okay, so this lesson is the second to last lesson for the unit. 
um, and it branches off into the Year 6 curriculum um, for uh, well, underneath money and financial mathematics, which is the same thing that we're doing right now. Um, and it's entitled, uh, it's titled Investigate and Calculate Discounts. Um, so within the going shopping assessment, the student must identify the best deals, um, whether it's a percentage or a dollar amount um, of a total price. Um, and this is this whole lesson is an extension of the lesson that was before it in um, like lesson seven, I think it was, um, on GST. Um, so it allows the student to identify uh, to identify the reasoning um, of why GST is taken off of why GST is added to things um, and just how much it is. So um, the like as they've seen on the receipts beforehand, um, they can kind of get an idea of how much percentage is used. Um, but if they don't really understand what a percentage is, it's a bit difficult to show them that without going into percentages. So in our school, we have a few students who have special needs or disability or have a few difficulties. Um, and in this class we have three students, one who is hearing impaired, one who is gifted and talented and one who has some financial constraints. So here are a few ways that um, we can support them in the classroom. For a student who is hearing impaired, um, it is preferred that the teacher who is instructing the lesson should be wearing or using a microphone. Um, wearing or using a microphone improves the sound quality for the students with hearing impairments. Um, also placing the student at the front of the class for better hearing access um, and being closer to the teacher so we can ask questions. Um, also to concentrate better, being at the back of the class can be quite distracting. Putting them at the front can be um, much more beneficial for the student. Um, another option would be to give handouts and worksheets that are of a decent font size. And lastly to provide visuals on the smart board to help the student use their eyes more rather than focusing on the listening part. Um, for the student who's gifted and talented, um, supporting the child within this lesson, if not all lessons, will be by providing support in any way possible. This can be by giving out extension handouts um, if she or he has completed the tasks early, um, but making sure that they are not doing too much and being overworked with the amount of handout sheets that they have been given. Um, by providing flexible groupings to enable collaborative work with the students of the same, same or higher ability um, or with shared interests is also a good way to support a child who's gifted and talented. Um, lastly, the student who has financial constraints, to support them in a classroom and throughout this lesson would be to ensure confidentiality, um, talking about money and ensuring like, empathy towards the child who may be feeling uncomfortable about the topic to begin with about money. Um, but teaching the child with about money and budgeting and saving is actually really beneficial for the child and the child's future. So, um, but making sure that we choose our words wisely and acknowledge that the student may be feeling a bit uneasy. Um, and lastly, just a little extension activity for the kids who found the activity too easy or um, finished a bit early. But this extension activity is more for the students who are gifted and talented. Uh, the task is about pizza and pizza slices. The task involves calculating the percentage, decimal and fractions of the pizza provided. Um, for example, a half can be written as a percentage of 50% and decimal 0 0.5 and fraction um, 1 over 2. Um, students are given three pieces, three pizzas that some slices have been um, eaten. Students have to calculate the percentage, decimal and fraction of the pizza and then hand it up next lesson so the teacher can mark um, and assess the students then. The reason why we're doing the pizza slices as an extension activity is because um, it's important to identify percentages and decimal points when um, finding the amount of GST. 
and also when using uh, discounts um, for buying and selling. Um, so this activity actually branches off into the Year 6 curriculum. Um, so one of them is ACMNA 1 through 1, uh, make connections between fractions, decimals and percentages um, under fractions and decimals. Um, and then the other one which is probably more important for what we're doing which is our CMNA 132. Okay, so the second one um, which is probably more important for what we're doing um, matches more because it's under the um, money and financial money and financial mathematics uh, strand, which is ACMNA one three two, identify and calculate percentage discounts. Now, um, of course, we're already doing a lot of work um, in the lesson plan. Um, this is just more of a backup, um, just in case. And also because um, we do have gifted and talented students in the classroom, so um, they might require more of a challenge. And um, branching off into the next year is probably the best best way to do it. Um, to conclude the lesson, the students will pack up 10 minutes before the bell goes um, and sit on the carpet to play 10 minutes of the smart board game. The teacher will pick three different students from the that different from the beginning of the lesson. While the students are playing this game, um, ask the students what three main ideas they learnt from this lesson about percentages and conclude the lesson and send them home.